actually have some peas. It's so much fun to see peas this early. It's only the second day of February and we've got peas growing. That is unheard of <laughs> around here. Okay, back into the house. I've got my tools. These are the specialized, I'm just kidding, they're not really specialized. These are just tools that I'm gonna to use to chip away some of the uh, mortar that's surrounding and sort of holding this glass in. And I'm just gonna lift it up and out if possible. It looks like it's not really being held in by much except for gravity. And the only part that I really need to deal with is this part here where there was nothing to set the glass on and instead I made the mortar go over the glass. So I was just trying to create a semi airtight seal. Now this mortar has a lot of clay in it. So, you know, that was, the intention behind that was to get it to fire or a little bit, you know, to cook and bake hard. And then there's also concrete in it, or cement rather, and that was to get it to harden up quickly. So that combination between clay and cement has created um, a really heat resistant but very weak mixture. The cement is really easy to chip away, in other words. So I'll just work at this for just a minute and we'll get this, get this out. All right, now I think we can pull up this glass. I'm a little bit nervous. All right, we're good. Wouldn't it be horrible if it only went like to here and then it just cracked? <laughs> that would be horrible. <laughs> Okay, well this is fun to, to inspect. We'll use that for something else someday. So you can see how we built it here. Um, the, yeah, it's warm. We chose a, a hot day to do this, by the way. Um, it's warm enough outside that we're not missing the heat from this too, too much. So it's a great day to work on this. So the, the completely combusted gases come up here. They're super hot and they heat up the well, it was the glass, so this burner area that was right here. They go through this pathway and um, progressively getting a little bit cooler and up and out the chimney when this is open. You can see that it just goes right into there, into the chimney path. Now that chimney path um, comes also from down there. So when we close this, the flue gases go down this pit and into these bells, little heat risers that, that save and collect the hottest of the heat and then eventually it goes down into the bench and up the chimney here. So this is our bypass. When we open it, it just goes up and out and we close it. It goes through the whole system and keeps the heat in our house. There's a nice bit of warmth coming out of here. It's nice. Oh, it is warm. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Now we have this new piece of metal, which I since discovered or since um, decided is too thick. This is quarter inch plate steel. It's quite heavy, but it was a pretty good deal. It's $40. Man, oh man. This is 43 times better at transferring heat. 43 times better than glass is. So even though it's twice as thick as the glass was, it's still gonna be roughly 20, 21 times better at releasing the heat quickly than the glass is, which means it'll heat our food 21 times faster. At least that's the theory. That is heavy. Oh, I just noticed that the glass it had kind of like dimples on it and you can see the marks it made right here. It's kind of cool. It's, it is cool. Okay. I'm dry fitting it just to see if it fits. It should, but we ordered it just a little bit big on purpose, but it might be too big. Oh. That's okay, we can cut it, but yeah, it's going to be a little bit too big. So, we'll cut it. All right, we're out here in the side yard. I've got my grinding wheel, and I've used up one already. <laughs> I've gone not very deep, uh, about, about half the, the thickness, so an eighth of an inch. Time to put on a new wheel. So after cutting this piece off, then I'll put on the grinding wheel and grind the edge off of this. It's 
So now I'm just gonna take off the cutting wheel. Save that for later. Put the grinding wheel on. Tighten it down. I'm ready to grind. <laughs> I always keep the Allen wrench that comes with these things. I always tape it to the cord. That way it's always handy and ready to use. Can never lose it that way. All right, about 10 minutes of work and that's all cleaned up. Let's see if it fits. All right, I've cut just a few strips from a piece of leftover um, fiberglass batting insulation. And it's actually really remarkably easy to cut. Show you. Look at that. Make sure I don't have any gaps around here. Maybe I'll overlap these ones a little bit. So I think we'll be good. Um, I think we're ready, in fact, for me to put the camera down and place the metal on there. We'll see how it goes. All right, I've got the metal on, and it looks like it's a nice snug fit, and it's consistent all the way around. All right, and you can also see that I've um, I've drawn in chalk um, the approximate location of the of the path of the heat. So again, this will be the hottest spot, and it'll progressively get cooler and cooler. Now the next thing is, now that these parts are sealed with the insulation, the fiberglass. So I've got to run a bead of RTV silicone, which is rated up to 650 degrees Celsius. Oh, sorry, I told you wrong. 600, rated to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. It will probably not get that hot. Okay, now I'm just gonna go along with paper towel. Just to get it to seal against all of the sides of the, of the cracks here. All right, you can see that there's a rather big crack there. So I think I'm gonna mix up some of that mortar that I was telling you about. All right, the mixture is really easy. I've got some locally harvested sand here. Just gonna get a couple little handfuls of that. All right, the next thing is simple Portland cement. I'm just gonna add kind of a small handful of that. All right, next a little lime. And this is also stuff that you don't, don't really want to be touching, but I'm going to wash my hands very thoroughly after this. Now the lime just makes it sticky, so it'll stick to the bricks. And the final ingredient is refractory clay. And I've purchased this from a ceramics place. Put about, about a whole handful of that in. Um, comes out to approximately six parts sand one part each of the cement and lime, and then two parts of the refractory clay. We got some water. I'm gonna make a pretty wet mix. And I've got some chemical resistant neoprene gloves. I'm gonna mix that up by hand. Consistency of quicksand. <laughs> a pancake batter. You can see that it just pours in like pancake batter. But because these bricks are here, it's gonna suck most of that moisture out pretty quickly. All right, just putting a plop there. A little bit more here. That'll do it. Put that on. And I want it snug, but not, not too tight. I want this to be able to to move back and forth. And that's all there is to it. All right, that is installed. So now we'll just have to wait a little while. We'll fire it up once the mortar is, is dry. Uh, well, kind of dry. <laughs> once it's set up, but it, I won't wait till it's dry because that would take three or four days. I actually forgot to seal up this part. I'll use the silicone there. Well, thanks for joining us. We will see you tomorrow. And we'll fire it up and we'll see what happens. Bye-bye. 
What do you think? Awesome. <laughs> I hope that it releases heat faster like we want it to. Yeah, me too. If not, we'll go buy another piece of metal, yeah. a thinner one, and yeah. <laughs> try again. I'm excited to be able to like cook hash browns on it or pancakes. Like yeah. I could cook like everybody's pancakes. It takes like half an hour for us to cook pancakes for me to cook pancakes, and I hate it, so I never cook pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be good. Hopefully, it works. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Is it getting hot? Do you think it's distributing as fast as the other one? I can't tell you. I've got the tiniest fire in there. I think this is going to be easier to clean. Yeah, I think so too. It looks nicer. <laughs> 